Okay, step two. Uh, this part we're going to be making the model. We're going to be importing the model of the plasma pistol along with all its markers. And we're going to be exporting our model to a .jms file. <clears throat> okay. First, what you're going to want to do is go ahead and open up 3D Studio Max. And then you're going to want to go get, or while this is loading, you're going to want to go get James D's model importer so you can actually see the model and its markers instead of making them from scratch. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and go up to Max Script, run script. And once you've downloaded that script, you're going to go ahead and install it using the instructions that came with it. And then you're going to open it. Run that script. You're going to say open file. Go to go to data, weapons, test, and then open your plasma pistol.txt. And it'll run through a bunch of calculations. And once that done, that's done, you should see a pretty crappy model of what looks like the plasma pistol along with a bunch of bubbles and squares. And there they are. We're going to go ahead and close that. Close that. Say, no, I don't want to save changes. Open this up. And there's our model. Okay. We're going to go ahead and select all the markers. Everything that starts with frame or a number sign. We're going to right click and say hide selection. And now we are left with what is a plasma pistol. Okay, I'm pretty sure this is the way it faces. So, all right, we're just going to go ahead and uh, make our model now around what we have. So, we're going to make a box. Since this is going to be simple, we're just going to make a regular box. Move it into place for our handle. We're going to make, I'm just going to go ahead and copy this box. Okay, I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees down. I'm going to go ahead and move it back so that we have sufficient place. I'm going to go ahead and convert this to an editable mesh. Click on that face. I'm going to move it out a little so it looks a little more like a gun. Um, you can do pretty much anything you want to this since it doesn't have to follow the uh, sealed world rules in the collision geometry. And this isn't even what our collision geometry is going to look like. So I'm going to go ahead and attach these two together because I just like to have one whole thing. I'm going to take this um, I'm going to move it around. Extrude it one, I'm gonna move it, make it, you know, just make it look pretty cool. I mean, of course, it's not gonna look cool because this is just a test model, but you can basically do whatever you want to this thing. There's really no limitations to your gun because of the fact that it doesn't have to follow any rules. Uh, let's see. And there's a very very sad representation of a gun. I'm gonna... All right, there's our gun. Now um, I'm gonna go ahead and save this. I'm gonna go up to our weapons test folder for our gun. I'm gonna go into models. I'm gonna save it as test.max. And there we go. Let me go ahead and move this thing over so that we have it in the, pl in the right place. All right. Now, now I'm going to unhide our markers. Ah, wait. First, I'm going to delete the mesh that makes up the old plasma pistol. I'm going to rename this to test, and then I'm going to unhide our markers. So I'm going to go ahead, right click, and say unhide all, and you'll see a bunch of those bubbles again, and they are all named accordingly. And they're not that confusing, so you can go ahead and place those appropriately. Um, right now, I'm moving my left hand cyborg, my left hand cyborg. So I'm I'm gonna have my left hand be just yeah, right on the handle, so he's holding it like a regular gun. Um, there's the ground point. I don't really like to move the ground point because I'm not exactly sure everything that it does. Here's our primary trigger, and our second, our other primary trigger. Not quite sure why it has two, but you know, we'll just keep it like that in the middle. So there's two there. Uh, our secondary trigger flare one and two. I'm just going to go ahead and move those together into the middle so they're not visible. Uh, there's a ground point and here's our second our event front. These things I'm not really going to move that much. Uh, I go ahead and select by name. I'm going to click our secondary trigger here and I'll go ahead and move that up 
and have the secondary trigger come out of more of the top of the gun. We're not really, I, I might cover secondary trigger in this uh, tutorial, I'm not really sure yet. Alright, and that's pretty much it for the marker placement. Now what we're going to go ahead and do is uh, link our model to the frame. So we're going to go ahead and link it to frame gun. And if you go into select by name, you should see test under frame gun. Okay. Um, now we're going to unhide all. Our, now we're going to hide all our markers again, and we're going to texture it. <laughs> Edit of a mesh. I'm going to go ahead and set all IDs to one. I'm going to go ahead and auto smooth it so it looks pretty nice there. And then I'm going to go into material editor, and I'm going to texture it. Uh, you should know how to texture by now. This is just, I'm just going to do a one basic texture. So I'm going to go ahead and speed this up for you. And now our model is textured. Okay, we're going to go ahead, unhide all again. We're going to go ahead and save. And then we're going to export. So we're going to navigate to our Halo CE root directory, data, weapons, test, models. And we're going to change the type to a JMS. Okay, and now we're going to save it as test. And now we're going to export it again. And we're going to go into our FP, Models, and save it as Test again. Okay, now that that's saved, um, I'm going to go ahead and create another box that's roughly surrounding the area of the gun. now we have what's going to be our collision model since it doesn't have to follow any kind of rules it really isn't even important to have one but for the purposes of this tutorial we'll go ahead and make one I'm going to convert this to an editable mesh give it an ID of 1 clear all smoothing groups and I'm going to go ahead and apply this I'm going to change this to collision geometry and I'm going to change our material name to collision geometry I'm going to go click on that to fuse. I'm going to go into bitmap and select none. Go up and apply this material to the selection. Now I'm going to rename this to collision geometry. I'm going to delete our old one, our old model, our actual model, um, and I'm going to link our collision model to the frame. Frame gun. And now as you select by name, you'll see collision geometry is under frame gun. Alright, now we're going to go ahead and save as test underscore collision. Save. And we're going to go ahead and export as a JMS into the physics folder as test underscore collision. Save. And that's it for creating the collision model and regular model and FP model of our gun. That's pretty much it for step two.